Now, in Australia, voting is compulsory. We get fined $50 if we don't vote, and we all consider it a great privilege to vote. I don't understand why people don't vote here. They shouldn't live here. They should go and live in Yemen if they don't vote. Because living in a democracy invokes enormous responsibility. Our campaigns are three weeks long. I ran for parliament and nearly won, and I got my whole campaign paid for by the federal government. That's called civilization. <laughs> now, even when you don't vote, a vacuum is left because no one knows who, or very few people know who their representatives are or their senators. What you should do is make it your duty every week or two weeks to go and see your representative from Congress who comes to your district and educate them. And if you don't educate them, into that vacuum steps the corporations. And you can't blame anyone but yourselves. Because the truth is you are the leaders. And your politicians are your representatives, including your president, is your representative. And we've demonstrated it during the nuclear freeze movement in the 80s. We mobilised 80% 80 of Americans to oppose nuclear war because they understood finally that it would be bad for their health. And the politicians reacted like that. So it's your fault about 1% and 99%. I'm socking it to you. Well, we don't have a good government either, so I can't really say too much. We've got a polit a Prime Minister who's a woman who knows nothing about foreign policy and, and our, our government is in the thrall of the mining companies too. So I can't really skype to you about being better than you. But I'm just saying that you can easily turn it around. Okay? Now, Fukushima. So huge amounts of radiation escaped. About three times more than Chernobyl. And they were lucky because the wind was blowing from west to east across the Pacific. In Seattle, the ambient levels of radiation went up 40,000 times above normal. You got a fair fallout here. Vancouver did. The Cascades were littered with radiation. And in fact, fallout fell right across America. Not huge amounts, but it did in Seattle. Um, they uh, measured lungs in Tokyo and in people in Tokyo got 10 hot spots in their lungs like plutonium and stuff. You only need a millionth of a gram to cause cancer. 10 hot spots. In Seattle they got 5 to 10 hot spots. So they were pretty irradiated. Now what you need to know is you don't just drop dead and journalists say, well, no one's died yet. And I can't stand ignorant journalists. It's imperative that we teach journalists that you don't get cancer immediately. It takes... Fu what? Shh! Don't interrupt me. Naughty boy. Um, it takes five years for leukaemia to develop and 15 years for solid cancers to develop. So the incubation time for cancer is a long time. Whereas if I sneeze on you, within two days you're sneezing or you develop flu. Measles, mumps, chicken pox is three weeks. But cancer is a long time. So radiation is a silent cryptogenic killer. And when the cancer arises and you cough up your first bit of blood or you feel a lump in your breast, it doesn't wear a sign saying, I was made by some strontium-90 you ate in a piece of Hershey's chocolate 20 years ago. Why? Because there was a meltdown at Three Mile Island, which is 13 miles from, Three Mile, from Hershey's chocolates. There was so much radioactive iodine in the milk with the cows that they, they froze the milk or dried it for six weeks till the radiation of the, of the iodine went away. But we don't know how much radiation landed on the soil where the cows graze, and of course the cows bioconcentrate the radiation in their milk. So I've been telling people for years, don't eat Hershey's chocolates, and they haven't sued me. So I'm right. <laughs> don't eat Hershey's chocolates. Okay. That's irrelevant now, but what is important is what's happening in Japan. They took over 3,000 children in a town called Itate and looked at their thyroids, and 1,000 of them have thyroid tumours. Now, that's really early because it's only in a year, and you would not expect this to happen for longer, you know, years hence. And the Japanese government said they would follow them. 
You don't follow children with thyroid tumours. You take the tumour out and you look at the pathology to see if it's a cancer. And if it is, you take out their thyroid glands. And then they have to have thyroid replacement every day for the rest of their lives or they will die, like diabetics have to have insulin every day for the rest of their lives or they die. So what you need to know is children are 20 times more radiosensitive than adults. Little girls are twice as sensitive as little boys. We don't know why. Fetuses are thousands of times more radiosensitive. One X-ray to the pregnant abdomen doubles the incidence of leukemia in that baby. Radiation is cumulative. Each dose you get adds to your risk of getting cancer. No dose is safe. Do not have an unnecessary X-ray. Do not have your teeth X-rayed every year. You don't need it, and it's really criminal to X-ray you every year. Um, my ex-husband was a radiologist. They make a lot of money. Don't walk through those X-ray machines in the airports. They're criminal, and I have to call the president of the AMA and tell him or her that they have to be banned because they're irradiating fetuses and little children, and old people are very sensitive to radiation, as are immunosuppressed patients. So it's very serious. Don't have CAT scans unless you absolutely require one. Don't allow, you know, don't, doctors are not gods. And so question us. If they say you need an X-ray, say why and how. And be tough with your doctor. Okay, so because three times more radiation escaped from Fukushima than Chernobyl, you multiply one million dead by three in 25 years. And the population around Fukushima is much more dense than it was around Chernobyl. The rice grown south of Tokyo, 300 miles away, is radioactive. Ha the rice, no, the tea, I'm sorry. Half the rice grown in Japan is grown in Fuku Fukushima Prefecture, and it much is containing cesium-137. The cedar flowers that are about to flower full, the pollen is going to be full of cesium. And it's going to land all over the people. They are incinerating radioactive waste to get rid of it. And it goes up in the air to be spread again and bioconcentrate back in the food. Huge amounts of radiation were tipped into the Pacific and you sit on the Pacific Ocean. Um, within a short time, maybe a year or less, you're going to be catching radioactive fish. Fish swim thousands of miles, the currents go thousands of miles, and Woods Hole Laboratory said they've never seen so much radiation tipped into the sea. And it's still going. The accident of Fukushima could still, Unit 4 could collapse with a spent fuel pool. If that happens with the next earthquake, Tokyo will have to be evacuated. 30 million people. If that happens, I'm flying my family out from Boston and my grandbaby to Australia immediately. Um, there still could be a hydrogen explosion. In fact, hydrogen continues building up in those three reactor buildings, so much so they're injected nitrogen in to dilute the hydrogen because you know that hydrogen reacts with oxygen and explodes. So we haven't finished yet. And in fact, they don't know how to clean it up. It is not in cold shut down. The corium, the mass hundred tons of melted Uranium lava is lying on the floor of the containment vessel. It hasn't finished and will never finish. I think it means the end of Japan financially. I think it means in long term the end of nuclear power, but it will take a while. Of course, your government is going gung-ho wanting to build more reactors and Obama um, is a captive of the nuclear industry. I need half an hour with Obama. He's an intelligent man, but he's a lawyer, and lawyers know nothing about biology. He's got two little girls he adores, and I think if I had half an hour with him, I could turn him around on nuclear power. Um, I, did have, I did have an hour and a quarter with Reagan, and although I thought I hadn't had an influence because he really didn't know much, and he was a sweet old guy, but... You know, I had to hold his hand to reassure him and establish a doctor-patient relationship with him. He did, in fact, um, start saying nuclear war must never be fought and can never be won. So I think I did influence him. So if anyone knows how to get to Obama, I'll take a day off from my trip and I'll go to the White House. Okay, now to, to read what I've said, 
Um, this book, Nuclear Power is Not the Answer, contains all of this and more, um, just basic biological stuff. But the first chapter deals with the fact that nuclear power induces a huge amount of global warming. Because nuclear power plants don't stand alone. You have to mine millions of tonnes of uranium with fossil fuel and millet, and two huge coal-fired plants run your uranium enrichment plant in Paducah, Kentucky. So the nuclear industry lies. And it's inappropriate for scientists to lie when the world is in the intensive care unit, critically ill. In fact, Rush Limbaugh should be banned. Yeah. Now, I want to just briefly get on to weapons. Um, <sighs> hands up those who think there's no risk of nuclear war now because the Cold War's over. Be honest. Come on. Oh, you're a well-educated audience, aren't you? Well, we all know this, um, that Russia and America have over a 1,000 nuclear weapons in the silos ready to be launched with a three-minute decision time by either Obama or, on the other side, by Putin. The weapons take half an hour from launch to land and the Russians pick up the attack and they press their button, so it's over in an hour. Um, Moscow has New York targeted with 40 hydrogen bombs, yet they talk about terrorists. Who are the real terrorists? Who are the real terrorists? Yeah, you are and Russia. What is the axis of evil? Who are the real rogue nations? Russia and America, and they're friends. So why are they so addicted to these goddamn weapons which could blow up the world in an hour? Well, one general said, if you take away our nuclear weapons, you're taking away the family jewels. <laughs> what are the family jewels? Yeah. Huh? What are they? No, the male genitalia. That's why I called my book Missile End of the Years Ago, a la Freud. So there's a deep psychological reason that these men like these weapons, and they're still there. Now, Clinton had an opportunity. We handed him nuclear abolition on a silver platter. We said, look, 80% of Americans don't want these weapons anymore, and we led that movement in Physicians for Social Responsibility, plus millions of others. And he could have flown over an Air Force One and said to Boris Yeltsin, who is very compliant, Boris, here's an agreement. We're going to abolish nuclear weapons in five years, sign here. And he didn't. If we are blown up in a nuclear war tonight, that's Clinton's legacy, for which I very much object. I object very much to him and his legacy. So we, we can easily abolish nuclear weapons. Reagan and Gorbachev almost did over a weekend in Reykjavik. Two mere mortals. They didn't because they were both obstinate and got stuck on the Star Wars notion. Um, but they could easily have done it. And we can easily do it now. Of the 23,000 hydrogen bombs in the world, Russia and America own 97%. Huh? Ooh, but what about North Korea? Ooh, what about Iran? Ooh, and they're running around the world with a microscope looking. This is ridiculous. See not the moat in the other person's eye. Look instead for the moat in your own eye. America led the nuclear arms race at every step of the way except one, and Russia blindly, stupidly copied and followed. So it's up to you now, and I'm laying it on you big time. There are enough people in this audience with enough intelligence and passion and drive and commitment to cause abolition of nuclear weapons. I led the movement in 1978 when I first came here, and I was an alien. I wasn't even an American. So you don't... I mean... You can do it. It's, it's easy if you use your intelligence and your creativity. 